Welcome everyone. We will start our program shortly. Welcome current and past alumni volunteers to All Together Tufts, a celebration of the many ways our volunteers support the university. I am Mary McLean, Senior Director of Alumni Engagement here at Tufts. We have a great program for you today, which will start by highlighting the accomplishments of our various volunteer cohorts over the last year. I will then have the great honor to introduce to you President Sunil Kumar, who will share his early impressions of Tufts as well as his vision. President Kumar will then be joined by a handful of alumni volunteers who will have the opportunity to ask him questions about his time at Tufts thus far and how alumni can support his goals for the university. We'll conclude the call by sharing upcoming opportunities for our alumni to engage with the university, including ways you can support Tufts beyond your current volunteer role. So did you know April is National Volunteer Month? So let's celebrate volunteer success. Because of the effort of all of our volunteers, Tufts alumni are engaged in many ways. Our regional chapters and special and shared interest groups organize and execute events cater to alumni in cities around the globe and those with special interests, such as Tufts Lawyers Association, Tufts Entrepreneurial Network, Tufts Women's Network, and more. Since July, these volunteer-led groups have hosted 63 events worldwide, yielding over 4,200 alumni attendees. Furthermore, our class volunteer program and reunion committees continue to have an incredible impact, encouraging engagement and philanthropy through peer-to-peer -peer outreach. Over 2,700 alumni currently receive news, event updates, and opportunities to give back from our 50 class volunteers. Similarly, our 291 current reunion committee members have connected with over 7,100 alumni to encourage them to attend reunion and support Tufts in honor of their reunion milestone. 
The peer-to-peer -peer outreach done by our class and reunion volunteers is opened at a rate of 28% higher than that of our Tufts email blasts. Our bows of the last decade, decade or bold volunteer contingent focuses on encouraging engagement and philanthropy among the 10 youngest alumni class, classes. This year alone, this group of volunteers has reached out to nearly 2,500 young alumni about connecting with Tufts through events and giving. They have organized and hosted 12 events in cities across the United States with 1,276 alumni in attendance. Tufts current and prospective students also greatly benefit from the volunteerism of our alumni. In the last two years, Tufts alumni have conducted nearly 5,800 interviews with prospective students. Additionally, students continue to utilize our online platform, The Herd, to connect with alumni professionally. The Herd continues to grow with student users more than doubling this academic year. Alumni users also increase by 20%. These are just a few of the many ways our alumni made an impact on the Tufts community this past year. Thank you to those of you who participated in these ways and to the many others on this call who volunteered and continue to volunteer in other capacities for the university. We are so grateful for your service. And now is, I'm excited to transition into the highlight of our program a conversation with the 14th president of Tufts, Sunil Kumar. Born and raised in India, Sunil earned bachelor's and master's degrees from Mangalore University and the Indian Institute of Science respectively, before receiving his PhD in electrical engineering from the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. Prior to arriving at Tufts, he served as provost of Johns Hopkins University, Dean of the Booth School of Business at the University of Chicago, and as a faculty member and administrator at the Stanford Graduate School of Business, where ultimately he oversaw the MBA program. In addition to his role as president, Dr. Kumar also serves as a professor in the Department of Electrical and Computer Engineering at Tufts University's School of Engineering. At Tufts, President Kumar is strongly committed to preserving and enhancing the emphasis on a liberal arts undergraduate education within a tight-knit and student-centered environment. He is also focused on enabling conditions that foster cutting-edge te cutting teaching and world-class research that serves both national and global interests through Tufts' many graduate and professional schools. President Kumar, Thank you for joining us for this conversation with our Tufts alumni volunteers. Thank you, Miriam, and thank you all for joining. Uh, it's a pleasure uh, to be with you today. And, um, and so um, I thought I'd uh, start by thanking you for your service. As Miriam pointed out, um, you help recruit our students, you help employ them, you uh, help the university with your time, talent, and treasure, and um, and we are extremely grateful. In fact, when I was a dean, I used to give a talk uh, titled um, "The American Private University is Not a Going Concern." So, for those of you who are in the business world, uh, "going concern" is a technical term that says uh, the university doesn't actually have the means to do another year uh, without constant help from volunteers and <laughs> like you all. And that's not unique to Tufts, of course. Every major private university in the US has that uh, feature. And so I couldn't be more grateful to you all for all that you do. So I thought I will take about 10 minutes and sketch um, my vision. Uh, I've been here now uh, 10 months. Uh, sometimes it feels like it's much, much longer than that. Uh, as you can imagine, I could have picked a slightly easier year to be a pre first year president than this one. Uh, but uh, I and before I joined, I also was able to uh, learn a great deal from the university from my predecessor, uh, Tony Monaco, 
<laughs> and by visiting all the schools at Tufts and spending time in Medford, uh, Boston, and uh, and Grafton. So, so with that in mind, I have a what I call my five pillars that I've put together. They, it's a fairly capacious um, framework, if you will, for what will eventually become a strategic plan for the university, where we will consult with the alumni as we come up with that plan. But I thought I would talk to you at a high level about these five pillars as a way to tee up our conversation. Um, so, and after that, uh, I'll leave time for Q&A. So first, um, what are the five pillars? The first pillar, uh, I class, you know, I characterize it as educating responsible leaders. And so, um, as you know, at um, Tufts, uh, we take civic engagement seriously. This is uh, not just a slogan here, it's something that is in the water. And, and so the idea that our students will graduate, become leaders like you all, and will be responsible as leaders would will do well and do good is is a important kind of goal for me and to maintain that that has all kinds of um, uh, implications that flow from the premise that we should educate responsible leaders the first is of course who do we educate how broadly do we open our doors and i believe we should open our doors as broadly as possible to educate as many people who can benefit and uh, from a tough education and can serve society well. And, and that doesn't mean growing the class as much as making the class accessible to as many people as possible. So for example, I, uh, a important priority for me is what I'm calling social mobility. Uh, social mobility, uh, I, I define that as not just providing access to students to the program and broadening access, but ensuring that on the output side, when they come out, they have the same opportunities and as a person who may come from a more advantaged background. And I think social mobility is, uh, uh, is a kind of founding tenet at Tufts. After all, we were founded as the beacon on the hill uh, or the light on the hill. Uh, precisely because of all the people that the institution a couple of miles south of here would not take. And we shouldn't lose sight of our original mission and therefore providing broad access to all potential future leaders and educating them well will be very important to me. Equally important for me, uh, in addition to being able to open the doors wider, is as I pointed out on the output side, to invest in career services, to, in, to strengthen that function so that our students can discover their purpose in life. Uh, by strengthening career services, I don't mean to imply that everybody should go off into the corporate world and make a lot of money. Far from it. Uh, I joke with the students of the SMFA that I, would, I don't want them to turn into investment bankers. I want them to be starving artists. I just want them to be the best starving artists that they can possibly be. And so enabling our students to intern and therefore learn about where they may find their purpose in the real world will be an important investment on the career services side as well. So that's in my first pillar. Um, the second pillar is to ensure that the um, Tufts experience remains as transformative as it was for you all. <laughs> if you had not had a transformative experience uh, which had a significant impact on your life, I doubt very much that you would do as much for the university as you do. So you are examples of people for whom the experience was transformative and I want to ensure that that remains uh, for future generations as well. Let me again go to a few concrete things in that pillar. One is housing. As Boston, Medford, Somerville all become more expensive uh, and to live in, our students are getting pushed further and further away. Uh, we currently accommodate about 60% of our students on campus. 
And that's, of course, all of the first two years, but only a relatively small fraction of the third and four, you know, juniors and seniors. And I'd like to change that. Um, so we are uh, in the process. Uh, Tony Monaco started this, but we have made progress. And uh, in the fall, I hope to be able to announce that we will be moving forward with a 450 bed uh, residence hall on Boston Avenue, um, uh, you know, at, at the towards the corner with Winthrop Street. So, so that is uh, that will take uh, and also Blakely Hall, which some of you might remember, which was the um, dorm for the Fletcher School, has been taken over by the university as well, and is being renovated so that another 120 rooms can be made available for undergraduates. So this will significantly increase. So we'll go to about 70 plus percent of our students coming back on campus by bringing these two dorms online. And so that's one. The other is to invest in student life. Um, uh, I would like to, I think our student center is relatively small and expanding social and other uh, spaces for our students um, and, and also, ensuring that there are enough places for them to exercise, stay fit, play sports, have fun, I think is important. One another priority for me along those lines would be a new aquatic center uh, that will serve a need for athletics. We have a very good swim team, which unfortunately practices in a facility that is not standard size. And it would be important for us to build a facility that will permit our teams to be even more competitive, but more importantly, everybody swims. So this would be a nice community building and a community uh, health and wellness uh, facility as well. So that's an example of a priority in my uh, second pillar, which is the student experience. The third pillar is on research. There are many areas where Tufts has spectacular research. Uh, truly world-class, um, for example, uh, in synthetic agriculture, we have a significant uh, presence. We are very well known, uh, very well known in material science, in infectious diseases. Um, I can go on with the list. And it is important for us to invest in our areas of strength and build areas where we're doing research not because we want to do research, but because we can make a difference and do more than our fair share uh, for advancing both knowledge, but also coming up for solutions for many of the existential crises that face us, face society, like food 50 years from now, which will be a crisis in several countries. So, so that would be my third pillar. My fourth pillar is the only one that is almost entirely new. While Tufts has done many things extremely well, it is indeed a special place. It hasn't done as much as my previous institutions or even many of our neighbors here in the Boston area. We do very little by way of educating people who are not in the narrow age brand of 18 to 26 or 28. So we, build, we run primarily full-time programs geared towards primarily people coming straight out of high school or straight out of college. We do not have, for example, mid-career programs. We do not have programs that permit people to upskill, learn something new. We have very few programs that are designed to enhance people's knowledge and skills. And I believe that our liberal arts roots gives us actually an advantage in building out a truly impactful, continuing uh, part-time and online education portfolio that will um, uh, make a difference in the lives of many people in the Boston area and around the world. And it'll be a way for us to both uh, increase the impact of the university, but also generate additional resources for the university. So that, that will be my fourth pillar. And it, as a concrete example there, uh, we are uh, expanding and significantly increasing the programming in our university college. Uh, and um, the university college is our portal for all our non-traditional students into the university 
and try and have significant impact there. And if you thought this is solely about um, uh, revenue, you'd be mistaken. For example, one of the programs that is uh, dear to me is called TUPIT. It's the Tufts University Prison Initiative, where at uh, MCI Concord, um, we run a program that uh, allows uh, incarcerated individuals to eventually get a bachelor's degree. Our faculty find this extremely rewarding, and it's a way by which Tufts can have even more societal impact. Finally, the fifth uh, pillar is the pillar we, I started off the conversation with, which is uh, civic engagement, but engaging in society more broadly. And for me, civic engagement doesn't just mean political activism, even though that's going to be a part of Tufts life as it has always been, but rather it also means holding a clipboard outside the dental clinic or dental hospital downtown in Chinatown, helping somebody who doesn't speak English navigate the dental uh, hospital. Uh, it means uh, running a veterinary clinic that gets patients from as far as three hours away. We are the only tertiary care veterinary hospital in New England. And that's a way by which we engage in society in very meaningful and impactful ways. And it's a, it's a way by which Tufts can continue to do more than its fair share uh, to help its neighbors and society. So those are my five pillars. Uh, I'll just recap them before we go to questions. Educating future leaders, providing a transformative educational experience, enhancing our research portfolio, expanding our definition of our student to a much broader population, and finally, having even greater societal impact and engagement. So with that, why don't I stop here? And uh, Miriam has come back on, which suggests that she wants me to shut up. So I will ta stop talking and uh, take questions for the remaining 20 odd minutes. So with that, back to you, Miriam. Thank you so much, President Kumar. It is exciting to hear your vision for the university and we are excited that you are at the helm moving forward. So we are now going to move to the Q&A. And I'd like to start, uh, President Kumar, by asking if you would comment on the campus climate, especially in wake of the Israel-Hamas war. Thank you, Miriam. This is, uh, as you know, it's been a difficult six months on many dimensions. And, um, and um, there have been uh, protests on campus as uh, elsewhere. Um, and... Um, the university takes, um, has taken the following approach to it. Uh, one, uh, we have condemned um, any form of hate, uh, anti-Semitism in particular, in the most forceful terms. We have held ourselves to the um, statement on uh, the freedom of expression that the university adopted in 2008 under Larry Backhouse presidency. Um, and uh, and sanctioned through a fair and um, systematic process, students who have transgressed uh, in their conduct. And uh, almost two dozen students have been disciplined for their transgressions through this process. And, and uh, um, when um, there have been resolutions passed by the TCU Senate, et cetera, which are um, uh, not in the interest of the university, um, we have been quite forceful in pushing back on those. So, so my approach to this has been one of um, uh, taking conduct transgression seriously uh, and keeping in mind that it is my job to make sure that Tufts remains a place that is conducive to the learning of all my students and not just some fraction of them. And so with that in mind, we have been uh, uh, doing our best to maintain such an atmosphere. Uh, we do have protests from time to time, but for the most part, uh, since the early March TCU Senate meeting, which did have an unfortunate incident, which again will be is, is being investigated and students found uh, guilty will be sanctioned. 
uh, we are uh, uh, we have been relatively quiet and uh, we will continue to uh, maintain uh, uh, vigilance to ensure a, a campus climate conducive to learning. So I'll stop there. Thank you, President Kumar. So I'd like to now invite to the conversation some alumni volunteers who have dedicated years of service to the university in multiple capacities. They come from a wide swath of volunteer groups, including the Tufts Alumni Council, reunion committees, class volunteers, and more. So I'll hand it over to our first volunteer, Angela Henry. Good morning. Thanks very much, President Kumar. Given your leadership experience at some very different institutions, what drew you to Tufts? So, um, well, my wife used to live in Porter Square, but that's not the reason. Uh, uh, I, I knew about Tufts, of course. I had actually recruited people from Fletcher at Hopkins, and so I, I knew about the institution. Uh, but for me, what really struck me as I interviewed for the job and met people, board members, faculty, students, et cetera, as part of my interviewing process, I realized three things about Tufts and all of which are very attractive. First, there's a kind of the average Tufts person I would characterize as follows. They are serious people who do serious things without taking themselves too seriously. And that's very appealing to me. I hope that comes across in my conversation. I don't take myself too seriously. I take the job I do very seriously. Uh, and, um, and so that was very appealing to me. The second and also equally appealing was the fact that um, nobody I talked to um, had anything but the highest love and admiration for the university. They just loved the place. And I came from institutions where not everybody would characterize their relationship with the institution as love. They respected those institutions, they valued the education they got, but they didn't necessarily love the place. Tufts is different. There's something in the water here where people genuinely love the place. And so that was the second thing that was very attractive. And the last one, and perhaps the most attractive thing for me, was the fact that Tufts didn't want to be another university. So when they asked me, it was clear Tufts wanted to be a better Tufts, not somebody else. And that's reassuring and, um, and, um, and uh, I think for me was the real draw. So, so those were the reasons. And year in, I believe all three assessments were correct. So. Thank you. Well, President Kumar, my name is David Myers, class of 1996. I'm a former Tufts University Alumni Association president, and I'm currently a class volunteer. Uh, my question for you is, based on the five pillars that you discussed, where do you see volunteers like this group helping the most as you work to achieve your goals during your term as president? I think they help in all of them, uh, but there are three areas where I think they make particularly important contributions. One in this educating future leaders pillar, uh, you already do this, which is you help identify people who would be good for Tufts. And on the output end, you help mentor them and help them guide uh, them through uh, uh, their initial transition into, a, into the working life and their professional careers. I think those two areas are going to be even more important. So I'll give you an example. Um, we have you know, about 11% Pell students. Pell students are from the two lowest uh, kind of earnings income quintiles in, uh, according to the US government. And a Pell student's parent typically makes like $70,000 a year. So we are, you know, usually they get full financial aid. These are exceptionally good students. The problem is they have no networks on the output end. So they don't know who to call to see how they get a job or even to find out what a job on, for example, Wall Street feels like. 
it's like I said, again, I don't actually care if my students go to Wall Street or not. But if a student wants to go to Wall Street, it can't be that because she spell, she can't go, right? And that kind of door opening is what alumni can do very well. If, if somebody were to say, I will open the doors for her, her life would be that much easier as she figures out what she wants to do and get a job. And that's where I think of all the pillars, our alumni can help the most to help Tufts be a true engine of social mobility. The other one is in the uh, kind of expanding the definition of the student uh, idea, where again, if you, if your uh, institutions can benefit from having its employees or trained up by our, our schools, then you should think of us as, as you think through your training portfolios and things like that. So, so keep us in mind because there are more ways you can interact with us than coming to reunions, which is great. And I look forward to seeing you all on campus, but there are, even in your day-to-day -day life, there may be ways by which Tufts and you can have a mutually beneficial relationship and so, so I see a very important role for alumni volunteers. So thank you. Thank you for that answer. We'll get to work on it. Uh, and now I'll hand things over to Abdiel Garcia. Hello, thank you, David. And uh, President Kumar, thank you. It's, it's such a pleasure to have you with us today. I'm Abdiel Garcia, class of 2014. Um, current Tufts alumni council member uh, and current tenure reunion committee volunteer, uh, Bose of the last decade member. My question for you is, how would you like to see Tufts alumni engaging with students and with other alumni? I think, um, you know, the, the nature of engagement uh, evolves as, as you progress through life, right? In the first five to 10 years, you're actually extremely useful as an asset in the short term for our students. <laughs> for example, somebody of my age is less likely to know what it is like to be a first year associate in a law firm, right? So because it's been so long since they've done it. Whereas somebody who's just, who's finished Tufts five years ago, went to law school and has started at a law firm and has been there a few years, is much more knowledgeable. And that, so in that sense, you become an asset of one form to the student when you're five to 10 years out. When you're you know, 10, 15 to 20 years out, you're an asset in a completely different way. Uh, because at that point, you could, for example, be worrying about how you train your employees, who do you hire, um, whether you want to hire from um, Tufts, et cetera. You can also come and teach in Exco at that point with your experience on important courses, uh, et cetera. So that's a different type of engagement. And then when you're you know, in your 50s and 60s and would like to start giving back in tangible ways to the university, there's a third way in which you can be engaged. So for me, I think, like I said on the previous question, I think for during every aspect of the alumna or alumnus' life, uh, the university can be a place not just to give back, but a partner in some sense. And, uh, and the university is a convener of people who you would like to both meet and, and learn from and be with and give back to, I think is the other way. So as you brought up correctly, it's not just that we want the alumni to engage with the university. We want the alumni to engage with, you, with each other, with the university as a kind of convener and a platform if you will. And that could be anything from a pub crawl when you're five years old to, you know, something quite different. Uh, maybe a trip to Talwar to learn about French resistance during World War II uh, and everything in between. And for those of you who don't know, Talwar is a campus we have in the haute savoie in France, and uh, you should go there sometime. So, so, so it's a, I think there's a broad spectrum that, and by the way, I'll leave you with one final thought. The university cannot take its alumni for granted. So if we want engagement from you, we must invest 
in providing fulfilling, enriching opportunities for you to spend time in. And so there is a burden on the university as well to do as well as it can to, um, uh, to support our alumni. And that's something that I fully intend to do. So thank you for that. Thank you. And I did a, a Tufts in Paris program, so I appreciate the, the friends, a shout out. Um, and uh, thank you, President Kumar. I'll now pass it over to Arjun, our next volunteer. Thank you very much, Abdiel, and thank you, President Kumar, for spending time with us today. I'm Arjun Shaula, class of 2007, current class volunteer, and I'm also a marketing of the Tufts, also a member of the Tufts Marketing Advisory Council. You've had the chance to travel around the globe and meet so many of our alumni. What are a few words that you would use to describe alumni? First of all, uh, again, um, I may be repeating myself. They're just nice people. And I, I don't know why I'm sounding surprised. I don't mean to sound surprised that you're all nice people, but but they're all nice people. Uh, and second is this, you know, they have deep affection for the university and uh, they are people who want to make a difference. And I think that's that's been uh, very, very rewarding to see. So that's how I would describe the alumni. Right. And um, and so, and, you know, I haven't met all of you, but I've been doing the rounds. I did New York, uh, L.A., San Francisco. I did uh, several events in Boston and um, and I've done a couple in India, but I plan to stay on the road next year. So I'll see many more of you and I hope to yeah, meet you all. Yeah. That's great. Thank you very much for uh, your thoughts, President Kumar. Please welcome our next volunteer, Jen Covell. Hi, President Kumar. Um, my name is Jennifer Covell. I was class of 86. I am the immediate past president of the Tufts Alumni Association and continue to serve on the Alumni Council. Uh, founder of TWN NYC, and I am, am going to be on the host committee for the Women's Summit, among a few other activities I've been involved with. Uh, my question is, uh, what is one piece of advice that you would give to a Tufts volunteer? Oh, it's wonderful. It's wonderful. Very, very good question. Um, maybe I will... Um, say exactly what I say to many of the students, um, which is, when in doubt, say yes. Whether it's an ask from the university, whether it's an ask from another student, whether it's an ask from a colleague, a classmate, if it's a ask from Tufts, say yes. Uh, I'm reasonably certain that you'll find whatever interaction there is quite rewarding. And uh, And so, you know, I, I tell my students the same thing. When a door opens, don't hesitate to walk through it. Uh, it's, uh, it's rare that you will regret walking through a door. Most times you regret not having done it. And so, so that would be my advice. That's pretty good advice. <laughs> I've probably done that quite a, quite a few too many times, but, uh, but I, I don't regret I one say. of them. <laughs> Yeah, it is a little self-serving, I must admit, but still, right, it's, I think it's good advice. Uh, there, uh, uh, there's a couple of questions. Uh, there was one in the um, um, that people put in the chat. There's one I'd like to answer, even as our time is running out, uh, which is um, civics curricula at the university, um, you know, do our students know about the government and do they learn about it in systematic ways? This has been a conversation among many college presidents and it's something that we will take seriously. Uh, it's hard to mandate a course for everybody at the university, but, man but making sure that people leave with an understanding of government and how it works, I think is essential for us to have a fully engaged um, educated populace and alumni body. Most people pick it up on their own, but there is no systematic one. The experiment that's running is at Stanford. 
Stanford actually now has a mandatory uh, civics course. And uh, it's something that I'm following with some care. And our Tisch College, uh, our College for Civic Life, provides a unique advantage for us, actually, should we want to go down this path, in addition to our policy department and the Fletcher School. So we have the resources. The question is, what's the way to do this that, so that it doesn't feel like to the freshman bitter medicine? Right. So you got to figure out a way to do this. So thank you for the question. Other questions, comments? We have some rapid fire questions for you. So let's kick off with Angela. Okay. Carmichael or DeWick? So I'll tell you what I tell the students. They ask me this all the time. And um, uh, I live in Gifford House. That's neither uphill nor downhill, neither Carmichael nor DeWick. So I'm I'm sticking with Gifford House. Very difficult. <laughs> I'll yeah. toss it over to David. Uh, I'm not letting you off quite that easy. Uphill or downhill? I got to say uphill simply because the views are better. Now that's going to get me in trouble. I'm sure there'll be a blistering op-ed in the Tufts Daily about the biased president. So, but anyway. Okay, uh, library or campus center? Uh, well, I'm a nerd. I like the library, but uh, but that's just me. I, I hope students spend as much time in the campus center as in the library. It's important to have fun. So, yeah. Would you rather sit in an Adirondack chair on the academic quad or go sledding on the Prez lawn? Oh, sledding on the Prez lawn. Um, it has... If there is a disappointment from last year, we've had one day of sledding. The entire year, one day. We had four inches one day in January, and that's it. We have not had an opportunity. It's even right now, it's raining outside. It's just been constant muck and rain. And so I'm hoping for a better uh, weather next year with a few clear, cold days with plenty of snow so that um, I can attempt sledding down the hill, so, yeah. And finally, when can students find you at the Tisch Athletic Center? So if you're, um, uh, this is one of the great advantages of uh, Zoom. Um, I don't have to stand up, so you don't see my waistline. And uh, if you did, you'd realize, I only go to the Tisch Center for three things, to watch students play, um, and um, in fact, uh, the last uh, uh, time I was at the Tisch Center was for the Medford Classic. I don't know if you know about this. This is when the Medford High School plays the Somerville High School in basketball. And so, so I go there to watch our students and our neighbors play. I go there for events uh, uh, from time to time. And occasionally I'll sneak in to use the golf simulator, but that's so uh, occasionally. So, so it's rare to find me in the, you're more likely to find me in the Granoff concert hall. I, I am more likely to be there, yeah. So thank you to all of our wonderful Tufts alumni volunteers for asking such thought provoking questions as well as some fun ones. And another special thank you to President Kumar for joining us today to share his Tufts journey so far and plans for the future. We look forward to seeing all you accomplish as a leader of the Jumbo community. So thank you. To conclude our program today, I want to bring your attention to a few opportunities to engage with Tufts on and off the hill in the coming months. First, our two reunion weekends will be May 17th through 19th and May 31st to June 2nd. If you are in the class year that ends in a four or nine, please consider joining us on campus to celebrate with your classmates. Additionally, President Kumar will continue his community tour in June to areas along the East Coast. Please keep your eyes peeled for registration set to open for Philadelphia, DC, and Cape Cod. As a participant on, your, on this call, you are already involved in one of the many volunteer opportunities we have here at Tufts. Those listed here 
are just a few of the ways our alumni donate their time back to the university. If you're interested in renewing your service to Tufts or taking on another volunteer role, please scan the QR code here or visit alumniandfriends.tufts.edu. And please also encourage your peers and classmates to volunteer or share names with our staff that you think would be a good fit for any particular volunteer role. And finally, here are the wonderful staff contacts you can be in touch with for any of the listed groups. We're so grateful to anyone who wants to get, in, get involved as a volunteer. So thank you. Many thanks to all who joined us today for our conversation. We look forward to hosting many similar opportunities in the future for our volunteers, both in person and virtually. Have a wonderful rest of your day and go Jumbos. Thank you.